Although he's only been around for a short period of time, in comparison to the rest of the cast, Kashimo has grown to be a top 10 favorite character in the entire series. However, his lack of showings have led many under the misconception that he's either an overrated or even underrated character. In this video, we'll be diving into Kashimo's strength, mindset, and overall prevalent moments throughout the entire series. If you enjoy Jujutsu Kaisen content, please leave a like and subscribe, and comment on some video ideas you want to see be done down below. A quick little disclaimer, we'll be going through some of the new information released in the newest chapter of Jujutsu Kaisen, which as of recording this video is chapter 220. If you want to avoid spoilers, you've been warned. Kashimo is one of the participating Culling Games players from the past. About 400 years ago, Kashimo was sitting on a tree stump surrounded by the bodies of his defeated enemies, where he's then visited by Kenjaku. Kenjaku asks Kashimo if he had fun, to which Kashimo says not at all, and that he should have fought Kenjaku instead. But Kenjaku says that he's not fit for fighting right now, but he says that the greatest cursed energy output ever recorded happened in Michinoku, and that he should go fight that sorcerer instead. Kashimo says that Michinoku is far away, and besides it sounds dubious to him. He asks Kenjaku who's the strongest sorcerer he knows, and he replies it's Sukuna from 400 years prior. Kashimo says fine, and that he's willing to entertain Kenjaku's offer, and he decides to fight Sukuna. What Kashimo is referring to is entering the Culling Games. Later in the story during the Culling Games, Angel explains that most people enter the Culling Games because none of them knew how to become cursed objects after death. But when we compare the mindset of these sorcerers from the past, the motive begins to make more sense. The past eras of Jujutsu were extremely hectic and chaotic times. Before entering the Culling Games, Megami explains to Yuji that most of these sorcerers are from the past, and some are even from a thousand years ago. But even the people from the last 100 and 200 years valued life completely differently. Fighting to the death was a normal occurrence, and they loved it. He says that negotiating with them is a lost cause. In chapter 3, Gojo explains to Yuji who Sukuna was back in the Golden Age. Back then, Sukuna was a human turned cursed spirit a thousand years ago. Sorcerers would fight Sukuna and sharpen their skills, but ultimately lose in the end. This just speaks to how much they loved fighting, even willing to die to evolve their strength. In the fan book, Gege is asked a question regarding the amount of fear that was spread regarding Sukuna Sukuna back then compared to Gojo in the present day. Gege answers saying that it can't be compared to Gojo. That's not to say he wasn't feared, but in the past, both sorcerers and cursed spirits were more vicious than they are today. The mindset around Jujutsu along with the mindset of the sorcerers themselves are completely different when contrasted with the present day. After understanding the mindset and lifestyle of these sorcerers back in the day, Kashimo and many others don't seem that crazy. The Culling Games is their way of extending their life with new opportunity to stand up the challenge that they live to face. The time in the modern era that we're introduced to Kashimo is in chapter 100. 58. After explaining to Akari the current situation regarding the Culling Games and the events of the Shibuya incident, Kogane appears and announces that a new rule has been added to the Culling Games, Rule 9. Rule 9 allows players to access data relating to other participants of the Culling Games, player names, points, the number of rules they themselves have added to the Culling Games, and which current colony they reside. After defeating another player and receiving 5 points, Kashimo says that the players he's been encountering are all too weak, and that sorcerers were much stronger 400 years ago. While still set on his goal he established with Kenjaku, Kashimo Kashimo asks Kogane where is Sukuna. Kogane then asks Kashimo if he'd like to add a rule to the Culling Games. This is when it's revealed that Kashimo was the one who added Rule 9. Kashimo figures that by adding a rule to gather the total number of points a player has collected, he can gauge the strength of the sorcerer. But the flaw to this idea is that players' points can decrease by adding rules making his gauge for strength inaccurate. Kashimo solves this issue by telling Kogane to also indicate the amount of rules that they've added. With the Rule 9 essentially only being created as a way for Kashimo to seek stronger sorcerers to fight, it displays the mindset and fighting spirit sorcerers of the past have embraced, truly living for the opportunity to pursue the challenge and the fight. As Kashima wanders the Culling Games, he encounters a panda and questions if he's escaped from the zoo. Utilizing Rule 9, Kashimo confirms that Panda is actually a player, and without wasting any time, Kashimo charges at Panda and punches him straight through the gut. Panda remarks that Kashimo is insanely fast and powerful. After knocking Panda back, he enters his gorilla mode. He uses his unblockable drumming beat to cause internal damage, but Kashimo realizes this. Kashimo then uses his staff to lock Panda's arm in place and pulls down against his elbow and breaks his hand completely off. Kashimo remarks that Panda is super average and throws Panda's broken arm in front of his face to blind him. Panda attempts to guess Kashimo's position but ends up miscalculating, leaving him open to an attack. Kashimo lands a barrage of punches and knocks Panda down. He says that if Panda tells him where Sukuna is, he won't kill him. Panda instead charges up into his big sister mode, but it's not nearly enough to touch Kashimo. Kashimo's cursed energy, unlike most sorcerers, possesses a trait. Kashimo separates the cursed energy charges like electricity, and when striking his opponents, a positive charge is transferred, while he retains the negative. The negative charge inside of Kashimo is discharged to his opponent without losing any electricity towards the ground. The result is a can't miss attack lightning strike without the use of domain expansion. After defeating Panda, Kashimo literally puts his head on a stick and continues to ask him where Sukuna. At the last second, Kinji Akari lands and interrupts the conversation between the two. Kashimo feels Akari's presence and tells him not to get him too excited. When Akari and Kashimo begin to scrap, Akari is still in his previous jackpot he landed during his fight with Charles. For those who don't know a lot about Akari's jackpot, I'll now give a brief explanation 
explanation. But for a more in-depth look, there will be a video in the top right and the description below. Hikari's jackpot mode lasts for 4 minutes and 11 seconds. It's the result of a winning role in the game Hikari plays inside of his domain expansion. Hikari gains an unlimited amount of cursed energy, causing his body to perform automatic reflexive reverse curse technique. Along with his curse technique and cursed energy being replenished after the jackpot, Hikari can open his domain over and over and over again. Kashimo and Akari begin to scrap, and Kashimo realizes that his cursed energy trait doesn't work on Akari. This is because Akari's cursed energy output is extremely high. However, this only gets Kashimo more intrigued, and he thinks that this new revelation is fascinating. Kashimo kicks Akari to the face and begins to get an upper hand, but this confuses Kashimo, and then he remarks that Akari's totally caving in. But Akari quickly wakes up and knocks Kashimo away. Kashimo remarks that Akari, unlike Panda, is not bad at all. Akari and Kashimo begin to brawl before Kashimo says he's finally charged up enough and blows away Hikari's arm. Kashimo realizes that he needs to capitalize on this opportunity and dashes at Hikari, but suddenly Hikari is able to counter Kashimo's dash like nothing happened. Remember what I said before about Hikari's jackpot? He gains a massive amount of cursed energy, causing his body to perform reflexive reverse curse technique to stop his body from breaking apart. In other words, Hikari is unkillable during jackpot. As Hikari's jackpot comes to a close, he opens up another domain expansion. Since the guaranteed hit in Hikari's domain is harmless, he can be as aggressive as he wants. Hikari's domain explained Kashimo the rules of the game faster than he can even give up on using Hollow Wicker Basket. Because of the result of Akari's last jackpot, he's now in increased probability mode, meaning he's likely to hit another jackpot. While jackpot is over, even in his own domain expansion, he becomes killable, and Kashimo plans on capitalizing on this opportunity. Akari and Kashimo begin to brawl once more, but without jackpot, Kashimo has the upper hand. But once the scenario for the game comes to an end, Hikari gets lucky and lands another jackpot. As they exit the domain, Hikari says to start the music and begins surging with cursed energy. Kashimo realizes that next time Akari enters his domain, he likely won't get another jackpot, meaning to win the battle, Kashimo just needs to survive for the next 4 minutes and 11 seconds. But he says that's how losers think, and Kashimo begins surging his body with cursed energy and tells him to turn up the music because this is his living funeral. Kashimo says that Akari may be unkillable for 4 minutes and 11 seconds, but he'll kill him anyways. Kashimo and Akari once again begin to fight. Akari punches a shipping crate into Kashimo, but he counters and the two begin going bow for blow through the shipping crate. Kashimo grabs the door handle and slams it against Akari's skull. Kashimo begins to hypothesize a way to kill Akari. He says that even though cursed energy comes from the gut, you still need your head to direct reverse curse technique. So by destroying the head in one blow, it should end the fully automatic reverse curse technique. When testing his theory, he launches another lightning strike at Akari, but Akari is able to eject the cursed energy from his nose, and he's also able to heal from the damage as he breaks. With the last few seconds of jackpot left, Hakari begins to cut loose and beat down Kashimo. But Kashimo was able to retrieve the cursed energy as electrical feedback, and he was able to connect a root through Akari's lower abdomen. And as the round ended, half of Akari's stomach was blown off, leaving him barely able to stand, much less open a domain expansion. Although Akari won't get increased probability, he'll get faster spins. Hakari is able to land another jackpot. Hakari's domain begins to move rapidly, making it hard for Kashimo to keep his balance. Hakari shifted the barrier above the sea and deactivated his domain, leaving Kashimo in an extremely bad position. His cursed energy acts like real electricity, and he can't stop it once it begins to discharge underwater. Kashimo had to choose between discharging his cursed energy underwater till it was all drained, or fight without cursed energy till he gets back to dry land. Luckily, cursed spirits emerge from the water, giving Kashimo a chance to regain his footing and combat Hakari. Hakari begins to exercise the cursed spirits, forcing Kashimo to continue to search for new ground. But luckily, Hakari intercepts Kashimo and sends him flying to the ocean. Like he mentioned before, Kashimo's cursed energy begins to discharge rapidly and he tries to suppress it. Hakari says that if Kashimo attempts to come back to land, he'll simply knock him back down. But Hakari's eyes begin to water and he quickly passes out. Kashimo's cursed energy trait causes the water to pollute the air with a toxic gas. Removing the toxin requires a higher level of reverse curse technique, and you must first locate and remove the substance in order to heal. If Akari can't detoxify fast enough, he'll surely die. But Akari's eyes open and he's back in action. His fully automatic reverse curse technique allowed him to remove the toxin unconsciously. With only 5 seconds left to jackpot, he decides now is the time to keep piling on attacks. Kashimo realized that the next domain Hakari would open would lead to increased probability. Kashimo not planning on giving up, he charges and grabs Akari's arm and a giant explosion happens. Kashimo had released all of his cursed energy underwater that he's been suppressing which turned into thermal energy. This caused a giant explosion and ripped off Akari's arm, stopping him from opening up another domain expansion. But at the last second, Akari luckily activated a binding vow to shift the cursed energy that normally protects his arm into the rest of his body, therefore saving his own life. After the fight, the two actually begin to talk. It's revealed that Kashimo managed to be that strong, all without using his cursed technique. He says he can only use his cursed technique once, and he's saving it for Sakuna. Akari makes a deal with Hajime, saying that he'll take him to Sakuna, and what he gets in return is currently unknown. Even when his life is at stake, Kashimo still truly embodies the love for the fight. He's an extremely strong sorcerer to say the least, being able to nearly beat up a special grade level sorcerer while he's being replenished throughout the entire fight is nothing but impressive. Seeing what Kashimo can
can do with just his cursed energy alone speaks volumes to his strength. If you enjoy Jujutsu Kaisen content, please leave a like and subscribe, and comment on some video ideas you want to see be done down below.